Hi, thanks for watching my video. We're going to be uh, discussing freezing point depression here. And it turns out that the freezing point of a pure substance is going to uh, freeze at a certain temperature. But then if you add solutes to it, either electrolytes or non-electrolytes, the uh, solution is going to be depressed or freeze at a lower uh, freezing point. And that's why we use this word depression. That's what it means. It just means the freezing point is lowered. So let's take a look at the physical substance, water. We know that water freezes at zero degrees Celsius, and that's the basis for the definition of the Celsius temperature scale. So it turns out that uh, pure water is going to freeze at zero degrees Celsius. Here we have some uh, picture of um, some ice that's floating in the ocean, and it turns out that that water is going to freeze at a much lower temperature because the solute molecules disrupt hydrogen bonding and kind of get in the way of the hydrogen bonding and so therefore it's going to require an even lower temperature to form ice okay so you can measure the temperature of the arctic ocean for example and it will be below zero degrees celsius but it won't be in the solid form the structure of ice there is shown on the left with all the hydrogen bonding shown as dashes all right so why in the heck would we care about this? Well, on a very cold winter day uh, here in Virginia, for example, you are familiar that uh, people sprinkle uh, salt on the roads. Now, normally, uh, if there's salt or ice formation on the roadway and it's a very, very cold winter day, we know that the weather is going to have to warm up to zero degrees Celsius or warmer in order for that ice to melt. Well, if you add sodium chloride or calcium chloride or mixtures of these salts, onto the roadway, you're going to cause the ice to actually melt at maybe minus 10 degrees Celsius or lower. So that's great. Even though it's freezing outside or below freezing, you can sprinkle ice on your sidewalk and it will melt um, that snow or ice on your sidewalk and you won't risk, um, you know, slipping, slipping and getting hurt or something. Okay. Another application of this is in your radiators. So we uh, know that radiators uh, contain water that circulates through pipes in the engine block to keep the engine cool while it's running. Uh, if the radiator freezes, maybe you're lucky and it just stops working. But if you're really unlucky, it could cause it to burst. All right. And the reason why is because when ice freezes, when water freezes, it expands as it forms ice and needs more volume. So if it's inside a container or a pipe inside of your engine block, um, it can cause damage. So we've got ethylene glycol solutions or antifreeze, they call it, that's added to water in your radiator. And um, it helps um, keep the solution from freezing at zero. It's now going to require maybe minus 10 degrees Celsius or much lower, uh, depending on the concentration or strength of antifreeze. Uh, here, we don't need to worry about it too much. But if you're up in Canada or North Dakota or something, or a very cold climate that gets very cold, you're going to need to use a more uh, concentrated solution to protect your car. All right, so let's talk about the formulas and what you need to know here. So the freezing point depression formula looks just like the boiling point elevation formula, but instead of Bs, we have Fs, okay? So delta TF is the change in freezing point, and it's how much lower of a freezing point you have for the solution. KF is the freezing point depression constant, and again, it depends on the solvent. Don't assume you're dealing always with water. In the lab, we'll deal with cyclohexane, which has a certain constant. M, again, is the molality of the substance. Again, we're talking about non-volatile substances. We could be talking about sugar or alcohols or calcium chloride. All right. I, once again, is the Van Hoff factor, your OpenStax chemistry textbook. Yay. Uh, neglects to mention that. So I is the basically the number of particles you have on the right side of a dissolution reaction. So for molecules, it's one. And for ions, you've got to add up the coefficients for the balanced chemical equation. All right. So once again, we refer to table 11.2 to grab the data off of it. First of all, we need to know the freezing point. For water, we all know it's zero degrees Celsius. But for some things, you might have to look it up. And the KF constants there are in the uh, very right column, OK? So KF is for freezing, KB is for boiling. So remember to use the correct constant for your uh, problem. 
All right, so here's a non-electrolyte. This means a molecular compound that's not made of ions, right? So what's the freezing point of 1.5 molal methanol? And methanol has that formula, and it's in water, okay? They actually add this to uh, water in tractor tires to keep them from freezing. Uh, you, of course, need water in, in the tractor tires to give it weight and traction as it goes through the farm, but you don't want this to freeze in the wintertime, so they put methanol in there, okay? So we want to find the Kf for the solvent. Uh, so again, we refer to this table. We find water. We look on the very opposite side, and we find the Kf value, 1.86 degrees Celsius per molality, okay? Step two, we want to determine the Van Hoff factor. So write out the dissolution reaction. Look at the coefficients on the right-hand side of the balanced chemical equation. We have one particle, so I is one, all right? Step three, we want to calculate the change in the freezing point for this uh, solution of methanol. So again, it's Kf times M times I, and we have all of these quantities, and we just multiply them out. And look at what happens. The molality cancels. I don't always show this on my presentations, but be in the habit of always crossing out your units as you're uh, multiplying things. Every number, I say in the class, every number should have a unit. I is um, unitless. So if you have a whole number there of one or a whole number of two, uh, you don't need units for that, okay? Rarely do we have a number that does not have units. All right, I get on my calculator, please follow along and check for yourself, 2.8 degrees Celsius. Now that's not the freezing point of water because water freezes at zero. We know it's supposed to be lower, right? 2.8 is a higher number. So we need to, step four, calculate the freezing point or the temperature of freezing of our solution. So it's equal to the freezing point minus the change. We all have memorized the freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius. We subtract 2.8 and we get negative 2.8 degrees Celsius, okay? Now, don't just think, oh, we just put a minus sign on front of that number that we get always. What happens if we, I don't know, do a calculation in benzene, all right? And we get a change in the freezing point of 3.2 degrees Celsius. We don't want to write minus 3.2 degrees Celsius as an answer, all right? In the lab, we're going to be doing cyclohexane. So you want to follow this procedure right here that I'm going to show you. So first, you look at the table, you find benzene. All right, what's this chemical? Benzene. And you find the freezing point, okay? The freezing point of benzene is 5.5 degrees Celsius. And so again, we use this formula. The temperature that our solution will freeze is equal to the freezing point minus the change, okay? So 5.5 is the freezing point minus the change, which is 3.2. And on my calculator, I get 2.3 degrees Celsius, okay? It has gone down, right? Pure benzene was, is going to freeze at 5.5 degrees Celsius, and this solution is going to freeze at a little lower, 2.3 degrees Celsius. So that's what you're going to do in the lab. Watch out for that common error. All right. Example number two is for an electrolyte. Electrolytes, remember, are ionic compounds. When they're added to water, they bust up and produce lots of ions. So I is not going to be equal to one here. So what's the freezing point of 3.5 molal calcium chloride in water? Step one, find the Kf for your solvent. It's in water, so we've done this before. It's 1.86 degrees Celsius per molality. Use the Kf, Kf, F for freezing. All right, step two, we want to determine the Van Hoff factor. The Van Hoff factor depends on the number of particles in solution. So calcium chloride is fake, all right? You have calcium ions and you have chloride ions. Count up the number of particles on the right side of this equation. There's one calcium ion and there's two chloride ions, so one plus two is three. So we've got this whole number without units, three. So the Van Hoff factor is three. We want to now calculate the change in freezing point for this calcium chloride solution. All right, so it's the Kf times the molality times this Van Hoff factor, which is three, okay? And please check along with your calculator and see if you get the same thing. I get 19.53 degrees Celsius on my calculator, but 3.5 molal 
is accurate to two sig figs, so I rounded off my answer to two sig figs. Now, that's of course not the freezing point of water because, you know, we're not going to warm water up to almost room temperature to make it freeze. So we need to calculate the, ch the freezing point of the solution by subtracting that change from zero degrees Celsius. So zero minus 20 is minus 20 degrees Celsius. Wow, that is very cold. That's like real, I cannot imagine it being minus 20 degrees Celsius out. All right, last example here of an application. Why in the heck would you need salt to make ice cream? I see a little container of uh, liquid there. It's white. I see in the background a cream uh, you know, jug. And I see on the, on the left there, ice cream salt. It's a, it's a Norton salt, Morton salt. All right. So why do you need salt to make ice cream? Ice cream is sugary. It's sweet. It's not salty. Well, the salt actually goes in an outside container to uh, lower, okay, to, to lower the temperature of your ice salt water bath to a temperature sufficiently low to freeze ice cream. Ice cream contains a solution of a whole bunch of sugar, cream, flavoring, and so on, okay? And um, the application of this is not done in the blender there. They're just mixing something up, and it has nothing to do with the washer machine that this is sitting on, okay? This is just a photo. But that's why you need rock salt to make ice cream. Hey, anyways, thanks for watching this video. Like, give a thumbs up on my video, and uh, please consider subscribing. Have a great day.